Hi, I'm Panjali Guman Karu. I work in our Mastercard Payment Gateway Services UK and I Product and Partners team. My team look at uh, partner relationships uh, as well as our sort of go to market strategy across various partner verticals. And we also work on the local market uh, product strategy, uh, what sort of products our customers are looking for and um, what's the sort of uh, go to market trends. How has COVID-19 affected the payment gateway industry? We have seen a recent uh, rise in sort of cashless societies and I guess more so with COVID-19 and the lockdowns and restrictions imposed due to that there's been a, an unprecedented growth in e-commerce it kind of comes naturally as it enables businesses to continue selling you know when the physical locations are closed or with the restrictions but also to enable the consumers for touch-free payments as well as um, giving them some sort of in-person interaction, but in a socially distant way. How has your job role continued to support our partners? So we at uh, MasterCard Payment Gateway Services have been working with our industry partners uh, across various sectors to empower safer and smarter online payments for customers for well over 15 years. But now with the desire to adopt more touch-free payments, uh, which enable the consumers to experience some in-person interaction, but in a safe and socially distant manner, we've seen an increased demand for newer payment methods, such as click-to-pay, in-app payments, alongside e-invoicing and pay-by-link. In my role personally, I've continued to support our partners to adopt and offer these new payment methods for the convenience and security of their customers, and I'm currently working on a lot of initiatives, including um, the click to pay initiative within the UK and I market. What other macro trends are driving change in the payment gateway industry during 2020? What should we keep an eye out for in 2021? I guess, um, you know, the contactless um, has already been on the rise worldwide to meet the, the growing and ever evolving consumer demand. But the newer trends uh, that we are seeing, um, I guess, necessitated by COVID-19 are across uh, adoption for new touch-free payments. These are um, across um, various forms of payment methods, whether that be click to pay, or it could be something as e-invoicing, where um, mostly used by tradespeople when they're visiting your home to carry out maintenance. There's, there's a whole load of use cases that, that uh, we could go through. But then there's uh, also sort of in-app payments where one could uh, simply pre-order and collect their takeaway coffees or pay by link uh, where a consumer could easily pay for their food and beverages at their favorite, at their favorite restaurants, um, as we've seen in the recent past in, in the UK and I markets. And I think these trends are only likely to, con well, not just continue, but also have a huge uptick as we move into 2021. What solutions are best equipped for tackling the payment challenges related to COVID-19? COVID has posed many challenges for businesses of all sizes and who, def who have had to almost overnight shift and adjust their focus to e-commerce. So at the Gateway Services, on top of enabling merchants to quickly sort of switch over to a full online business model, we're also helping them to provide some in-person interaction, but in a socially distanced and safe manner. With the recent sort of uptake on these touch-free payments, we're seeing new ways of pay, uh, payment methods, such as click-to-pay, as a way of keeping the contact to a minimum, um, alongside with e-invoicing, where a merchant can create and hosted e-invoice for a product or a service and share this with their consumers by posting the links on the social media or sharing it via email or messenger apps. What we've also seen is um, a huge uptake um, on sort of click to collect, click and collect payments, which usually used for um, grocery collections where delivery isn't available has been a huge uptake. What we've also seen in the recent past is um, an uptake on pay by link where the merchants are able to create a customized payment link for goods and services sold in store or virtually, and that link is sent across to the consumers electronically. How do the needs differ for small businesses and large merchants? I guess um, from the SMB merchants' uh, perspective, obviously it's no surprise that they've uh, kind of had the biggest hit due to COVID, and as such, even Across SMBs, we're seeing people adopt to sort of move more towards um, 
the e-commerce, embracing more of e-commerce and, and moving across to online payment methods. Where we're seeing a huge uptick across SMBs is on e-invoicing, because these are our regular trades people who kind of come rather than issuing physical invoices or have any physical contact, are now able to issue e-invoices to their consumers to make the payment. And also what we're seeing across SMBs is to retain their sort of consumer loyalty uh, almost. There's been a huge surge in the recurring payments um, and we're seeing that across um, uh, almost um, sort of 50% uh, of consumers citing that the convenience um, of recurring payments um, and not having to kind of enter their card details or their credentials every time is a big tick. Across the larger merchants, um, obviously with the renewed focus on, on e-commerce side of things, Larger merchants are also looking to diversify, uh, but will also be taking into account the regional differences within the consumer behavior. And that's what we see across all our customers, the sort of adoption of newer payment methods, whether that's uh, in-app payments or um, the click and collect payment methods. How much do you see COVID-19 accelerating changes that are already in motion? As with any crisis, it uh, almost necessitates um, the adoption or the acceleration of, of changes, and COVID is no different. We will only see the adoption and acceleration across touch-free payments uh, going forward. There was always a shift, already a shift of uh, towards contactless, and, and I guess through the pandemic, and I guess you know as we move into the second phase of the pandemic and all that's to come, we'll only see this trend picking up uh, further. As people pay online more, what measures can people take to stay safe as possible? As with any crisis, we know that that creates opportunities for criminals, um, with some companies reporting nearly about 700% increase in, in phishing attacks globally since March. And also, obviously, tran you know, transaction fraud has also been on the rise. I guess majority of merchants have adopted systems with sort of dynamic rules and, and are heavily focused on real-time transaction monitoring to track the an anomalies um, and, and recognize any trends. But I guess as consumers as well, they need to stay more vigilant and look out for any, I guess, any suspicious emails, such as an email that might, uh, that is intended to kind of cause panic or in an instance, if a consumer has displaced their card or they believe that they've been victims to identity theft, they must take immediate action and inform their banks or their card issuer and cancel all their cards. How can businesses plan for the rapidly changing payment landscape due to COVID-19? And how is your role in MPGS supporting this change? I think businesses, as always, will need to focus on putting the consumer first and thinking about the consumer needs and ever-evolving consumer behavior. In response to adopting online and touch-free payment solutions that are available, such as e-invoicing and e-NAP payments, businesses will need to make such payment methods available. Also, ensuring that there's constant real-time monitoring of fraud and, and any anomalies that the businesses can spot would also be almost a necessity. I continue to support our, our partners to kind of not just adopt, but offer these newer payment methods which are not just sort of safe and smarter, but they are absolutely aligned to the newer consumer behavior. How prepared do you think businesses, banks, and consumers are prepared for the second wave during peak season? I would say that whether that's businesses, banks, and consumers, we're all far better prepared for the second wave than we would have been for the first wave. Because God, <laughs> who could have ever prepared or anticipated anything like this to kind of pan out. In that sense, um, throughout the, the first peak and you know, throughout um, the sort of outbreak of the pandemic, we've seen businesses quickly adopt and change to the newer business models of uh, with the uptake of e-commerce and consumers paying more online and shopping more online. I think businesses now um, personally are far better prepared than they were for the first, during the first wave. Have you and your team found it rewarding to work on solutions that are so relevant? I think being able to respond to, to a crisis of this scale and help our customers throughout uh, this, this sort of very difficult time 
has been extremely rewarding, I guess, not just for me, but for my entire team. And some customers in particular had specifically requested for assistance with sort of market insights or to help the businesses with forecasting. And it has been absolutely fantastic to work with our, uh, with our data and services colleagues, to name a few, to help out customers with this request. Music.